Honorable President Sir, Financial Commissioner Railways, Director General National Academy of Indian Railways, my colleagues from the Railway Board, faculty from National Academy of Indian Railways, probationary, probationary officers of Indian Railways Account Service, Indian Railways Personnel Service, Indian Railways Service of Stores. Respected Sir, it is a matter of great pride and privilege for the Indian Railways that the Honorable President of India is meeting the probationers from three services of the Indian Railways today. As far as railways are concerned, this is happening for the first time. It will indeed be not only an occasion for them to remember, but will also boost their morale as they complete their probation and step into active service. Sir, I am pr proud to introduce this batch of probationary officers who qualified through the Civil Services Examination of 2010 and would be completing their training in, in and around June 13. The present group of probationary officers hailed from 17 different states of India, representing the unity and diversity and the rich cultural mix of our great country. They hail from varied academic backgrounds, from humanities to engineering, medical, management, law and sciences. This group has a strong presence of women, with 29% of the group being ladies. Sir, Indian Railways are the lifeline to the nation. Running 19,000 trains, including 12,000 passenger carrying trains and 7,000 freight trains daily. Providing a variety of services to its customers. They carry over 8,500 million passengers per annum and have only recently in 2012-13 entered the select 1 billion ton freight club as the fourth member, the three other being USA, Russia, and China. Indian Railways handle a mammoth infrastructure with the round-the-clock efforts of a dedicated and committed workforce of 14 lakh employees. The Indian Railways are not only the prime movers of the economy, but are also the most environmental friendly mode of transport today. I am confident that the probationary officers will be experiencing a sense of great pride in having been chosen to serve this great organization and their country through the Indian Railway Network. Sir, during their training, the probationary officers would have had the opportunity to, tra to travel across the country for a first-hand experience of working on the zonal railways, the production units, and other important administrative units of the railways. Considering that railways is a manpower-intensive organization with a history of peaceful and constructive industrial relations, they are also given an exposure of the machinery in place for negotiations with the organized workforce, the complexities of improvement in industrial relations as also its relevance. Probationary officers from organized services undergo 78 weeks of centralized training. The National Academy of Indian Railways is the alma mater of the railway officers, irrespective of their discipline, and conducts foundation and induction training for probationers as also in-service training at various stages of their career. Today's interaction with the Honorable President of India would indeed be a red letter day in their life and would propel them to achieve greater heights of excellence in executing their role as public servants. Sir, on behalf of the Ministry of Railways, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude for this very kind gesture of sparing your most valuable time to motivate these youngsters for facing the challenges of the future. Thank you, sir. Honorable President of India, Shri Pranam Mukherjee, senior railway officials and Rashtrapati Bhavan officials, course directors and my fellow officer trainees from the academy, a very good afternoon to all of you. It is a privilege to be here and I express my deepest sense of gratitude to the head of the republic for having granted us this audience. We began our journey with the foundation program with our brethren from other Indian Railway Services in the December of 2011. The course was designed to initiate us to the vision of Indian Railways and develop at the very inception a sense of esprit de corps. We then embarked on the much awaited Bharat Darshan. It was an opportunity to appreciate India in a rich diversity and to cognize the immense contribution made by Indian Railways to the progress of our great nation over the centuries. 
phases one and two of our training schedule were an exhilarating medley of lectures and workshops. Specialized modules on organizational behavior, competency mapping, employer branding, and transformational human relations were conducted. The railway organization is home to the largest workforce and robust unions. Hence, workshops on leadership development, persuasion and negotiation, and conflict management are an imperative part two. Despite the front frantic schedule, our knowledge absorption was invaluable and made us raise the canons of excellence in our professional field, that is human resource management. Visits to Maharatna, Sale, and reputed private institutions have exposed us to the best practices in the corporate world. A training module with the Ministry of Information and Technology, Government of Andhra Pradesh, enabled us to understand IT interventions that can disseminate time-bound and streamline services. The Ministry of Labor and Employment organized a pertinent training program on labor laws. Air India, currently undergoing a paradigm revamp, prepared a session on change management. A short stint with the State Planning Commission, Madhya Pradesh, enabled us to understand the nuances of state welfare programs and also sensitized us to the social service sector. The ethos of the entire probation has been to chisel fine administrators out of young men and women and instill a spirit of comradeship among them. We stand before you, Honorable President, ready to assume our responsibilities and tackle challenges head on with utmost integrity, commitment, and dedication. Thank you, sir. The Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, senior officials from Railway Board, officials of Rashtrapati Bhavan, ladies and gentlemen. Sir, it is indeed an honor and matter of great pride for me personally that I've been asked to share our training experiences in your August presence. This honor has increased many fold with the knowledge that Honorable Sir is the leading luminary in the field of finance in our country. During the Railway Foundation course, we realized that behind the simplicity of the service provided by Indian railways, where a passenger buys a ticket and is transported seamlessly across the country, a huge and vastly complex organization is at work 24 hours every day, every day of the year. To efficiently run this vast and complex organization, complete coordination amongst the multiple infrastructure departments and service departments is required. During this course, we had a first opportunity to look at the working of Indian railways from the inside, especially during the 10-day Bharat Darshan, where we traveled the breadth of the country on railways. Sir, a finance officer is required to not only excel in her own sphere of working, but also to know the working of the whole organization and be alert to the various policy initiatives and directives of the government while keeping herself well informed about the larger macroeconomic scenario. To this end, sir, IRAS probationers are deputed to undergo field training in railway divisions, railway workshops, railway production units, and zonal railway headquarters. In these various spells of field training, we undertook journeys in railway locomotives called foot plating, and with the gas of the train, did motor trolley on railway lines, visited wayside stations and work sites, conducted ticket checking, went to railway sidings, and while tra traveling on trains, interacted with passengers to know at first hand the aspirations of our fellow citizens. One of the most instructive weeks that we spent in the field was while visiting the new line project in Jammu and Kashmir. Sir, to have an overview of the direct taxes, IRA's probationers underwent a one-week appreciation course at the National Academy of Direct Taxes, Nagpur. So another field that, was, that we covered was that of public-private partnership, for which an intensive one-week module was organized at the Indian Railways Institute of Transportation Management at Lucknow. To further expose us to the larger financial institutional structure, we have had interactive sessions with officials of Reserve Bank of India, Securities and Exchange Board of India, and State Bank of India. Sir, in a career as a civil services officer in a vast and diverse country, I take it as my duty to appreciate and help preserve the rich, vast, and diverse cultural heritage of our country. IRA's probationers underwent a one-day attachment with the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts in Delhi to appreciate the initiatives being taken to preserve our cultural heritage. So we were also attached to the Delhi Metro to appreciate the initiatives taken by Delhi Metro in providing a world-class facility and service. Sir, I belong to Hong Village, situated in the lower Suwansi district of Arunachal Pradesh. The nearly one and a half years of our training has given me a first an opportunity to see our country and to appreciate the extremely important and vital role played by Indian Railways in connecting all parts of our country. 
sir, on behalf of my fellow IRAs probationers, I express my sincerest gratitude to you for giving me an opportunity which I will cherish throughout my life for sharing our trading experiences. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Chairman Railway Board, and Director General of National Academy Railways, Railway Finance Commissioner, Railway Board, Senior Officers, Provisioners. It's indeed a pleasure for me to welcome you to Rashtrapati Bhavan. First of all, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate you for your success in a very difficult competitive examination and getting the chances of being successful in the civil service examinations in three important sectors of Railway services. It speaks of your academic excellence. I congratulate you. You are entering into the services of the people. A civil servant is essentially dedicates his and her life activities and services to the cause of this great nation. Still, we are in the process of forming our nation, converting a developing economy to a developed economy, making efforts to make the largest functional democracy of the world effective and people-oriented. And in this gigantic task of converting the oldest civilization of the world, but a new nation into the most powerful nation on the planet and taking its rightful place in the Committee of the Nations. You are joining in that great task of nation building by serving Indian Railways. Indian Railways is a departmental undertaking, but it is the, one of the most important infrastructures in its size, operations, and affecting the number of people. In 1924, railway's finance was separated from general finance. And even the practice of having a separate budget was introduced since then. But if you look at the volume of railways finances, you will be surprised that from a meager 183 crores in 1947-48, which was the gross tariff earning, it has reached 1,43,000 crores of rupees 
from 183 crore for the year 2013-14. This enormous enhancement is not accidental because the size of Indian economy itself has undergone major transformation. When the first finance minister of independent India, Shanmukham Chetty, presented his budget, the budgetary transaction, total expenditure, was 197 crores of rupees. And the budget which has been presented by the finance minister for the year 2013-14 is nearly 16 lakh crores of rupees. That is the enhancement of our budgetary transactions, financial transactions. As Chairman Railway Board has very correctly pointed out that by carrying goods in terms of ton, India has entered into the club of the billions. I think it was more than 1,000 <coughs> million tons. And only a couple of countries are enjoying their status, including China, Russia, and, of course, USA. With 64,600 kilometers, root kilometers, India has one of the largest railway networking. And if somebody asks me what were the great unifiers in this country, I will say it is Indian postal system and it is Indian railway system. North, south, east, west, a small hilly terrain, gateway of the deepest forest, and 